What's up, guys? Welcome to the Intuitive Souls podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your continued support as I walk this crazy path that we call life. And I'm excited to have you here and share with you some tips and tricks and tools to help you along your journey. If this podcast is helping you in any way, shape, or form, if it's giving you aha moments, if it's giving you insight, if it's giving you tools that are helping you, I would be eternally grateful if you can head on over to iTunes and write a review. Those reviews allow me to get this podcast to the ears that need to hear it. And now more than ever, I think this shit can fucking help people. I mean, I really do. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think that this knowledge and this wealth of information could really change the world. So before you go ahead and click submit, make sure you send a screenshot to me at hello at ericarusso.co and I am going to send you a thank you gift just for taking that time out of your busy day because I truly do appreciate each and every one of you. So I just left one of my favorite little crystal stores and I thought, huh, you know what? Let me chat about some of my favorite crystals when it comes to spiritual work, psychic work, intuition, mediumship work, because I don't think that I've ever, I mean, I did, I have had the Crystal Awards show way back when, but I want to share with you again my favorite crystals and why I use them and how I use them. So with that being said, the first crystal that I absolutely love, especially when it comes to any sort of spiritual work, mediumship work, connecting to angels, whatever the case may be, is apotholite. Okay, this was the first stone that really gave me a wowy wow kind of moment when it came to mediumship. Apotholite looks like clear quartz, but it's quite powerful. Um, and I like to place it on my third eye when I am meditating or doing yoga nidra, which means I'm laying down and meditating. And it really opened my clairvoyance up and that's how I use it. I like to have it close by when, if and when I am doing any sort of spiritual work because I feel like it just kind of opens the door a little bit more, all right? So that's apotholite. Number two. One of my favorite stones that I'm working with now is sodalite. So sodalite is very much a throat chakra stone, but it's also really good for intuition. And I feel, and again, this is just my personal preference. Everybody has a different relationship with the stones, okay? What does something for me might not do it for you. It might be a completely and totally different aligned thing for you, and that's okay. I'm just giving you my personal experiences with all of these stones and what I personally use them for. Take what you want, leave what you don't. That's all it is. So Soda Light has been a go-to of mine. First and foremost, the vibration of it is very calming for me. It really allows me to get out of my head and really into a clear, calm, and collected space. Maybe it's the color of it, I'm not sure, but it's really that go-to stone when I feel like I need to come down, when I feel like I just want to find a state of peace. It's also very good for me when I am writing, because I am now writing my second book that should be coming out in a couple months. So with that being said, what I think it allows, what it helps me do is take my thoughts, take the the stream of energy that's coming through me and really put it in a way where I believe people can understand through my words or even through my word or through my writing. And that's the stone that I've been using for that. Another stone that I have been really enjoying is flower agate. It's a really, really, really pretty stone. Um, And what it essentially does is it's good for that goddess energy, that feminine energy, that balance of the Shiva and the Shakti within us all. For me personally, they say that it's really good with embracing feminine energy. I believe for me, when I meditate with it, I have a tower that I meditate with. 
I believe for me, when I tune into my own energy field, it not only allows me to be more receptive, but it balances it out for me. You know, we, we're all, we are all with feminine and masculine energy. The masculine energy in us is the go, 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 get shit done, where the feminine energy is much more of a laid back receiving energy. I can honestly admit that I think that now more than ever, women are much more in their masculine energy than their feminine energy. That's obviously a given with the stress and everything going on in the world and the responsibilities that, you know, we all have. But with that being said, my, that's the experience that I have. It, it feels when I'm working with it, that it kind of balances me out. And what you can do to see this is like, oh, well, Erica Russo said that this is like the stone that balances her out. So go buy some flower fucking agate and you literally hold it. And you really need to get into that quiet, receptive place within your mind when you're meditating and just tune in to your own frequency, tune into your own energetic field when you are meditating with it and see, see the flow of energy that's coming in and out of you at that time. See where it's trying to become balanced. It's quite the experience if I say so myself. So that's the third stone. The fourth stone that I would say that I am vibing with right now is, shit, what was the stone? God damn it. Oh, sunstone. Sunstone, this was one that I... I've known about it. I've never been drawn to it. And then last summer, I was just so drawn to this small tumbled stone at a particular store that I was at. And for months, I carried it. I was just so attached to it. And sunstone is really great for confidence. It's it's one of those crystals for the sign of Leo. And we all know that Leos are, you know, the, the showstoppers, the ones that want all the attention, all of that stuff and I really truly feel that sunstone had really helped me gain confidence in a time where I needed confidence it really allowed me to realize my own power and that I could do things and that you know I'm totally capable of doing far more than I can ever imagine and sunstone was it for me it it was like that lioness power, courage, courageous bravery that I needed to get out of me. So those are the stones that are on the top of my mind that I know that I'm working with recently. I feel like there's definitely one more stone that I'm working with. I just can't quite... Oh, clear quartz. Clear quartz, man. If you don't... I mean, everyone, first and foremost... If we're going to talk about the crystal world, the first thing that we need to talk about is everybody needs clear quartz. Everybody needs clear quartz. Just tumbled stones. Clear quartz has been such a pivotal part of my life since really kind of awakening and everything. Not only do I use it... um, Oh, by the way, guys, if you are fresh flower people and you buy those supermarket flowers... I have found a way to extend the life of those flowers to up to two weeks. I shit you not, okay? And what you do is you get the flowers, you put them in water, then you put the powder that comes with it, but then you have to do a splash of vodka. Then you put a crystal quartz, a clear quartz in there. I have had the same bouquet going (laughs) for legit it's going on two weeks on Sunday and I'm recording this on Friday and it's still looking beautiful like I can probably go even longer than two weeks so start doing that you're welcome but clear quartz is just that go-to when I'm making moon water when I'm doing any sort of intention work because you are able to charge it to really whatever intentions that you want it's just such a powerful stone and it's so it's it's just that go-to stone man it's just that stone so those are the stones that I wanted to share with you guys today take what you want leave what you don't those are my personal experiences thank you guys for tuning in thank you guys again I love you guys 
I hope everyone's doing well. And by the way, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my email list. I have a lot of upcoming live classes coming up. And from now on, I'm not, this is just going to be a place where I dump all of the things that want to come out of That sounds so bad. Oh my God, Erica. Ugh, sorry I said that. Didn't mean to say that, but I use this platform particularly to just let things flow through me. I don't really have a set plan. When something wants to come through, I just press record on my phone and that's what this podcast is. So if you're ever interested in working with me in taking a class in doing even more work with me, the best place to go is either follow me on Instagram or get on my email list, email list preferably because I don't own any of the social media accounts. Just remember that we had a shit show a couple years ago where my Instagram was deactivated and I lost like 8,900 followers. So with that being said, get on my email list, stay up to date with me, come hang out with me. I do monthly newsletters where I share my YouTube, not my YouTube, Oh yeah, that too. I'm doing YouTube. Go subscribe to YouTube too. (laughs) I'm everywhere. I am everywhere. Anyway, so what I was saying, I have a monthly newsletter where I share what's going on with me, my favorite things, what I'm using, what I'm, you know, the books I'm reading, the tools I'm doing, you know, using all of that stuff, as well as my monthly playlist that I curate for everyone. I hope everyone, again, I felt like I said this again, but whatever. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Go grab these crystals. I'm going to have a link to a Etsy store that I know the owner, who is absolutely amazing in the show notes. You can go ahead and check that out and see if she has any of these stones. And I love you guys, and I will see you around the internet. Bye.